So how many are feeling just a little bit sleep deprived this, this morning? You, you're, you're missing that hour. Aren't you glad you don't have to set it forward every single morning or every single night? And you, Don't you wish that you, you got to gain an hour every single day? And doesn't work that way, does it? Well, I, I think that, that most people, most of the time, don't think about the most important stuff. I mean, I'll be glad to talk about, about weather with you. I'm not a weather forecaster, but we're glad these days it's been mild. At least I am. Some of you, oh, you want snow so bad so you can get on your tractor and throw it around. I'm going, you know what? Too bad for you. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping you're, you're terribly disappointed, at least, at least this spring anyway. I'd be glad to talk food with you. I can tell you where uh, I like to go and what I like to eat and how you can help that dream come true for me. I'll be glad to talk sports with you and about right now, like basketball, it's, it's huge. But, you know, some people don't care about basketball. Uh, I'll be glad to talk about, like, cars with you. I don't talk trucks. I don't talk tractors. I know I'm a little out of place here. But I'll talk cars and I'll, I'll talk about family. I'll talk about relationships and I'll, I'll talk about finances and prepare. I mean, I can talk about all those things, but I'd say those aren't the most important things. Because generally speaking, we don't talk about, we don't often think about the most important stuff. And if we sometimes think about it, we're not talking about it for, for whatever reason. And I think that most people aren't thinking about, nor are they very concerned with what I call eternity future. That, that which happens once we leave life as we know. Once, once this life comes to an end, we're not, we're not sitting there focused concentrate unless, unless we know it's near. Unless we know that our days are not many. And then, or if someone we loved, if we know that their time is, is drawing near. And then we think, well, okay, our minds may go there. It's, it's if the evil one has lulled us to sleep when it comes to future uh, eternity. He's got us, I go, too busy and too preoccupied with the now, so we don't think much about tomorrow. There's, there's almost this, this assurance that we're all going to get to where we want to go. And I don't care if it's the people in the church. Talk to the people outside the church. Talk to your, your fellow students or, or, or athletes. Talk to your co it's like no one's really all that worked up about where their future eternity is going to lie. Or that I'll deal with that when I get there. And don't, don't worry about that now. Because I'm a person who figures things out. I'm a survivor. I'm, I'm fast on my feet. So when I get there, then, then let me deal with it then. I got, I got too much stuff going on right here right now. Finances, family, my own health, and so so don't don't mess up my thinking right now. My question is what if it's too late once you get there to fix it? Well I, I know you don't want to think about that. I I think our this current thinking sort of mirrors the title of this book. I'm okay. You know, when it comes to future eternity, I'm okay. And by the way, don't you worry about it either. You're okay. We're all okay. Okay? I, I like the title of this book a little bit better. I'm okay, you're not so hot. <laughs> Never read it. I just like the title. I'm not sure if it's true. I just like the title. But but maybe maybe this person's. It's kind of hard to read. Can you guys read that? Okay, that's good. Could you read that to me? Let me see. Yeah, I'm not okay, and you're not okay, but that's okay because God makes us okay, and that that's getting there. I mean, you you. I'm not really okay with all that it says, but I get it. 
you know, Rick Warren, he, he, he's getting there. Now, Jesus doesn't deal with the okay issue. He, he comes at it and he says, look, there, there are these two gates. Or think of them as on-ramps. There's, there's these two on-ramps. As you, if you, as you go up here off 24, as you head toward Fort Wayne, and, and if you want to get on like I-69, if you want to go north, if you want to go to Michigan, if you want to go south, if you want to go to Indy, listen, listen. There, there's, there's just one way to get there, and there's just one way to get the other place. You can't, you can't, I'm telling you, you can't get to Indianapolis by going I-69 north. You can't do it. You're like, well, I'll figure it out when I get there. Well, you're not going to get there. I don't care. I don't care what you think. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you memorize scripture. I don't care how much you gave. You're not getting to Indianapolis by I-69 North, right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so these, these gates are like on-ramps to roads or a way to live. And Jesus says, look, there, there, there's two gates. There's only two gates. There's two roads, there's only two roads. There's two destinations, there's only two destinations. There's two kinds of people, there's only two kinds of people. And he starts it out and says, look, enter by the narrow gate. Now, he picks it up in verse 14 about the narrow gate, but then he just goes, listen, uh, for right now, I want to tell you why to enter by the narrow gate. Because the other gate, the other gate, the wide gate, uh, it, it's wide because the way is broad, the road is broad, the lifestyle is broad. And that might look good, but let me, let me tell you where that leads. It, it leads to where you don't want to go. He goes, I promise you that. And, and I'll tell you one other thing. There are a lot of people on that road. Many. Many go through that gate. It looks like the popular destination because look at everybody. They may not even have to line up. The gate's so wide, you don't even have to wait in line. You, you just kind of go through. And it looks like that's, that's where we ought to go. It looks like that's where uh, we want to be. But there's there are just two, though. Um, he says, don't go that way because I, I promise you that's, that's where you don't want to end up. So beware. It, it's, it's, a, it's a warning passage. Beware, watch out, like, like heads up. Caution. Think about this and think about this well, but don't, don't choose that path. Don't go through that turnstile. Listen, it's broad for a very good reason, and it's like almost anyone can go through that. It's a gate, it's, just, it's a very welcoming gate. Please, please come. It's also broad because you can bring all your thinking. You can bring all, all your stuff. You can bring all your luggage, all your baggage. And everyone's welcome on this one. Listen, there's not going to be any judgment at this gate. There's not going to be any repentance at this gate. There's not going to be any type that you've got to think like this and you've got to do these things. And, and by the way, both, both gates have similar signs. One gate doesn't say uh, the way to life, and the other one says the way to... It doesn't say that. They, they both they say anything is, is the way to go, the, the way to live, the, the way to fulfillment. That's what they both say. And I think this gate also says, the broad gate, the way to love. This is how you love people. We, we accept everyone. We're, we're not going to be biased because of your gender, because of your age, because of your intelligence. 
because of what you believe or don't believe? Because of your preferences? Because of your philosophies? Everybody, we all get along here. The only thing is that it's out here is making people feel guilty. So this is the no guilty gate. This is the no guilty road. We don't allow guilt here. I mean, those people that have made you feel guilty in the past, forget them because there's no one on this road that will ever make you feel guilty. You don't have to leave anything or anyone behind. Bring it all aboard. If you fly airlines these days, you know what you have to do. And it, it's, it's a pain because we all remember the days, don't we? When you didn't have to pay a penny to check luggage unless it was a whole lot. Two big bags free, throw it on, plus a couple you could bring on board with you. And today, lots of places you got to pay for everything. Well, here, you don't have to pay for anything. Bring all your luggage. We don't care how much you have. It doesn't cost you a thing. See, this is the gate and the road that basically of no sacrifice. Sacrifice, because sacrifice isn't any fun. And so you don't, you don't have to leave anything. In fact, what you don't have when you get on this road, we will fill it up to overflowing. So why don't you come and tell all your people, tell all your friends about this gate, tell all your friends about this road. It, it's like a party. It's, it's like a beer commercial come true. Everybody's happy, having a good time. It's the eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow. Who cares? We don't care. Don't you care either? You know, you're all worked up, aren't you? You're, you're all worried about things. Stop it. Come with me. There's plenty of us on this road. A lot of company. You'll never, you'll never be lonely not on this road, you won't. And don't you know that a lot of people these days will do almost anything not to be lonely, won't they? It's a terrible feeling to think that you're by yourself and all the things that loneliness tells you, that you're not lovable, that you're not worthy, you're not much fun. Who'd want to spend time with you? And, and you see, then you go, see, that's why you're having trouble relationally. And that's why you're by yourself. I don't, I don't know if these days, if, if you're at school, come lunch hour, and if you have to sit by yourself in the cafeteria, is that a big deal? It's for lots of people. You know, some folks would rather go hungry than sit by themselves in a school cafeteria, right? Some of you guys go, yeah, it's, you're absolutely right. If I don't have a buddy, if I don't have a friend, if we're not going together, if I'm not assured of a table of people where I belong, I'll, I would just go without because to sit there by myself when everyone else seems like or is having a wonderful time is more than I can take. So I'll do almost anything to not be lonely. For some people, I'll do almost anything to get in a relationship. Almost anything. I'll do almost anything to, to stay in a relationship. Almost anything. Welcome, Sean. <clears throat> Have a clock issue? <laughs> uh, did, okay. <laughs> Kind of lonely, are you? <laughs> okay, all right. Don't, don't. But the best where a lot of folks are at, you know. But you get on this road and, and those problems are over. You'll always have people. You'll always be accepted. You'll never be alone. So come. Please come. We, we all can't be wrong, can we? What if the answer is yes? See, the only problem, the only problem is I went ahead. Let me go back. 
The only problem this road, it leads to destruction. Uh, by the way, it's, it's not as easy as you think it is. It's tough to live life, period, with Christ, outside of Christ. If you want a really tough life, uh, tell Christ to take a hike and live, live life best you can, figure it out in your, on your own. Read a couple of good books, go to a couple of seminars, talk to a couple of buddies, and uh, let them lead you. I'll say this beware of anything that's promoted as easy. There's lots of, lots of things out there that's trying to promote uh, the easy way. If, if you want to get to the proper weight, it's easy. J- just take this. Or if you want to, if you want to look thinner but not be thinner, we'll just put this on. R- right? There's that stuff that's out there. I- I've seen it advertised, and somebody thinking, "Are you wearing that now?" No, I'm not wearing it now, but it- it's out there, and instantly you-, you can look like you're 20, 30 pounds thinner. You want to look younger? Oh, we we've got stuff. We got stuff. To make you look younger, although you're not younger, and what's the big deal? But it seems to be a big deal, and so look younger, uh, be thinner, and, and, and those things. Hey, five easy steps for a healthy relationship. Hey, let us, let us work, let, let us deal with your retirement stuff for you. See, it's, it's, it's complex. Just, just come here, it's not that big of a deal. We can, we can help you out with that. Can I just say that anything that's important is never easy? It's not easy. It wasn't supposed to be easy. But that's what people think. Let me go on the easy path. Here's, here it is. There's the, the easy way. And then there's the, the less traveled way. See, in verse 13, Jesus talks about this, this narrow gate. And then he, then he talked about the wide gate. And now verse 14, he's going to talk about the this narrow gate a little bit more before he just said, don't, don't go down the, the broad path. Don't do that. Well, let me talk to you about a little bit about the, the about the, the narrow path. See, the gate is small. The, the way is narrow, but it leads to life. But here's the issue. There aren't many who find it. It's, it's a gate that you enter by yourself, not with a group of people, not with a crowd, not with a family. It's, it's by yourself. Just like when you pass away, when you die, you die by yourself. Well, what if a big, big plane goes down? Listen, you die by yourself. What if a big bomb goes down? You die by yourself. Maybe someone's holding your hand, but you enter eternity alone. You get on this, this path uh, alone. It's small. It's restrictive. You, you can't take your luggage. You, you can't take your bag. You can't take all your ideas. No, no, no. Everyone may be welcome, but there's only a few who are going to be able to pass through the turnstiles to get on the ramp. Over in Luke 13, Jesus was asked this question. He said, Lord, are there just a few who are being saved? He'd spent some time with Jesus and it just looked like there weren't a whole lot of people that were turning their lives toward him. So he says, just, just a few and you know what Jesus almost never does is answer a question with a yes or no. He always goes into a, a story of some kind. And this is how he answered that question. Are there just a few? Just a few? So I would say, yeah, that's right. There's just a few. There's not many. No, there's, not, there's not many are being saved. There's, there's just a few. He said this. He said, strive to enter by the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and they won't be able to enter. Sounds odd. 
I mean, they, they want to enter, but they can't get through. Why, why, why can't they get through? Because they won't give up their stuff. They won't give up their ideals. They won't do an about face. Too much pride. No repentance. No sense of self-sacrifice. They want to get through, but when they get there, I think they sit there and go, no, I don't think so. I don't agree with that. I got to do what? I have to give up what? Well, you know, I had a friend of mine, and, and on it goes. It says strive. The, the, actually, that word strive in the, in the Greek text means to agonize. Agonize to enter. And so there's a, there's a part of, of salvation which, which uh, uh, comes along with, with, with agony. Meaning that you get saved by yourself alone, one person at a time. Like I have to give up some things that I've been holding on to to get me through life. And so it, it, it's not as easy as you might think. We say, well, you know, just say a prayer. And I'm not saying you don't get saved by saying a prayer. We say, just walk an aisle. And I'm not saying you don't get saved by having your heart right and, and walking an aisle. But he says, you know what? Sometimes it's not as easy as we want to make it. We want to make salvation easy. And in one sense it is. In another sense, it's not or it wouldn't be uh, having to agonize or strive. And that some want to, but they cannot because they will not give up. Strive. How is and what makes this so hard? This is what it is. Jesus says, this gate, this entrance, it's me. I'm the door. I'm the gate. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. That is, find rest, find, find contentment. They don't have to agonize like they had to agonize anymore. Jesus says, I'm the door. And then there's another passage. He says, I'm the way and I am the truth. And I am the life. And, 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 and I am narrow because I am not allowing anyone or anything else to be the on-ramp to life. It's just me. And these days, and I think it's always been to some degree, people going, I don't buy it. I'm not going there. That seems too egotistical. That's, that's too narrow. That's, that's too small. Because if you say Jesus is the only way, that means anyone and everything else won't get you. Jesus said, that's, exact, that's absolutely right. That's exactly what I'm saying. So some people go, I think not. I think not. Strive. Strive. I go, it's not the easy way, but it's the only way. Here, can you tell some people that? They're going to go, and that's why. Don't go to church. I think our culture is getting to be more and more like that these days. They're just going, nah. You know what? If that works for you, good. But it's not going to work for me. And so you, you keep that to yourself. I don't want to hear it because I don't believe it. And you're just getting me worked up. Yeah, the gate's small. The road is narrow. That leads to life. And as Matthew 7 says, few are those, few are those who find it. And that should break our hearts. Do you, do you think that all the people on the broad road, do you think, they're no, do you think they know they're headed 
toward destruction. You think they know that? I don't think so. I think if you were to tell someone that who's on that road, they'd go, no, I'm not. Why do you say that? I'm, I'm okay. I'm just fine. Keep your alarmist views to yourself. Uh, they think that, you know what, I'm okay and you're okay and almost everyone's okay. There are a few exceptions, but not many. See, the view of most people is that the broad road is the narrow road and the narrow road is the broad road. They think that almost everyone's getting to heaven and there are just a very few that aren't. That's what people think. That's why they're not concerned with the next life. That's why it doesn't keep them up at night. That's why people are coming up to you and say, look, you go to church, right? Yeah. What do I have to do to be saved? Anyone asked you that recently? You say, no one's ever asked me that. That's right. Because they're not concerned. They think everything's good here. A large part of our job or our ministry is to help those on the broad road get on the narrow road. You may have to say something. You may have to do something. You may have to offend someone. But then I say, so what? If your Christianity has not offended someone lately... What type of Christianity is that? Jesus offended people all the time. And that's why they put him on a cross. We're done with you. That's crazy. We don't like what you're doing, although you're you're healing some people and you're feeding some people. Nah, we're taking you out care enough to confront, sometimes you care enough to offend. See, let, let's help prevent, I go, the greatest disappointment in the history of the world because this is what happens next. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Now that's recognizing him for who he is. He is the Lord. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah. Not everyone who says, Lord, not everyone who has Jesus right or recognize him for who he is. Not everyone will enter the kingdom of heaven. What? But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's not what I call an intellectual issue. Who is Jesus? This is Jesus. It's not that you know it. What are you doing? The one who does the will. Uh, see, many, many will say to me on that day, what day is that? Uh, the Lord, the second coming of, of Christ. When he, many will say to me on that day, Lord, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Did we not prophesy in your name? Didn't, didn't we in your name, we gave you the credit. Didn't we cast out demons in, in your name? I mean, weren't you there? Didn't you see it? Someone was demonic and we came in. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was to behold. Demon was there and demon is gone. The person was freed up and we celebrated. Weren't you there? And, and in your name, didn't we perform what? Many, many miracles. Listen. I've never prophesied in my life. I've never cast out demon in my life. I've never performed one miracle in my life. I can't even talk like that. Maybe you can. I can't. I'm looking over there and going, that's that's impressive. Casting out demons, doing some really neat miracles. I'm I'm sure there's probably some healings in there. And I'm going to go, that's that's good. That's really, really good. See, they're, they're like this. You talking to me? I'm not in. I thought I, I thought I was a shoe, and I thought I was a slam dunk. How can I not be in? Look what I did. In your name, but look what I did. 
I just want to like, like a timeout. Beware of anyone improving their salvation points to an event or an event in the past. Beware of anyone who, who points to results. I'm a Christian. Beware of those who speak well of Jesus and even supposedly has, has the support or the proof that they want to point to. It's not so much what we have done as far as the wow, but who we are. Because the next statement that Christ makes is, to me is one of the most I don't know what word to use. Surprising, I guess. He says this. Let me tell you something. I never knew you. I I don't know who you are. Depart, that is, leave me. Get away from me. All you're doing, you're you're an outlaw. You practice lawlessness. That's all you're doing. Yeah, you did some you did some things that wowed a lot of people. And they were impressed. But he says, you did all that stuff outside of a relationship with me. And to me, that make, it just makes you go, whoa, 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 whoa. What's that say about me? There have been religious people for centuries. There's always been religious people doing some religious stuff. Some of it pretty impressive. Even even given Christ credit who weren't themselves in Christ. They were deceived. They were they were on the wrong road and they never even knew it. They thought, they thought for sure if anyone gets in, I'm getting in. That's not a problem, it's not an issue. Now, I'm not saying you can't have an assurance of salvation. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there are a lot of people that have an assurance who shouldn't have an assurance. Whenever you speak of your assurance, don't ever, I would say, don't ever speak of it a past when you signed a card, you walked an aisle, you said a prayer. Maybe, maybe, Bible always doesn't, doesn't point, Bible points to what are you doing right now? Where are you right now? Not at the camp back in 83, not that you threw a stick in the fire, not, not that you signed the back of your Bible. See, we're so fast to give assurance. Jesus says, there's a place to doubt your assurance. Here again, I'm not saying you can't, not saying you shouldn't. We're so, we're so quick. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Don't sweat it. You're good. You sure? Oh, yeah, you're good. Christ said, well, what's going on right now? Because... He says, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to go, I did this, I did this, and I did this. And I'm going to say, I don't, know who, I don't know who you are. Meaning, I don't have a relationship with you. And at that point, it's too late. So, many people will one day be surprised. It is. Many people will one day be surprised. Many church people will one day be surprised. And I say, don't you be surprised. That that is a surprise you don't want. It'll be the worst surprise of your life. Then I say, it's okay to periodically check and see if you're okay. It is. Say, so, you know what, God, I, 
I've been doing the, the God thing. I've been doing the church thing for a long, long time. And I, I, just, wanted, I just wanted to double check here. Does, do I have a relationship with you? Does my life square up? I'm not talking perfection, but does my life square up? Is it ten of my heart? Am I on the right road? Am I going in the right direction? You know, God, God let me know, or maybe I need to talk to someone else. You know, help me with this one here. It's okay to periodically just do a check. Every once in a while, I'll just tell you, I do a check. Why? I've been doing this for a long time. Vast majority of my life, either I've been in Bible school or I've been pat or both a long time. And I got somebody, you know, wait, wait. Am I have I got this right? Normally the check doesn't last too long, but sometimes I do a check. And I think it's a healthy thing to do. I mentioned that we have these cards of our, of our Easter services. Here's one thing I'm going to ask. I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume that, I mean, some of you I know are, are going to be on vacation, but most of you will be around. Well, most of you are going to be here. Who do you know that either is not in, in church on a, on a regular basis or they're not in church at all or you're pretty sure they're not right with God, they're on the wrong road. Who do you know? And uh, put that in their hand. Say, listen, would love for you, would love for you to come out this Easter. I mean, do it Easter. Uh, a lot of people, they're going to come at all, they're going to come Easter. And maybe you need to sweeten the pot. Hey, you know what? We'll take you out to eat. And you come on over. We're going to do an egg hunt or, or whatever it might be. The guy doesn't talk too long or we can leave whenever. You sit near the back. We'll keep the car running. Uh, you know, just raise your hand, give me a nudge, text me, and we're, we're out. You know, pinch the baby. Make them cry, uh, and we we can leave then. But see if you see if there's someone you care enough to maybe be rejected. It's all right. It's all right. A great poet said, two roads diverge in the wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by." And it's made all the difference. And it's true. It makes all the difference between life and destruction. Be a difference maker. Pray with me. Lord, it can be a bit upsetting to read about the two roads, who gets on them, where they go. And there's a lot of people that think they're on the right one, but they're not. Lord, help us to make sure that we are and to get as many people as we can to get off the right one, to get on, or get off the wrong one, get on the right one. We think about so many, we get caught up in so many things. And this should be primary or top uh, on our list of things to think about. So to help us to be invitational, to not be ashamed, to be able to accept rejection. We may be surprised. We may be surprised. And, and to them, maybe they were just waiting for us to open our lips and to invite them to church, maybe and invite them to a relationship with you. So work in us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.